Hello, everyone.、Uh, about two weeks ago, pneumonia really got me flat. And do you know what made it worse? Trying to reschedule meetings when I have a really bad fever. I'm like, where's my computer? Where's my calendar? Do I really need to log in? Can I even type? And I was thinking, what if there's just this chatbot on my phone that I can just talk to and ask who I'm meeting with tomorrow? And even ask the bot to write an email, send to the meeting host, and ask for a reschedule. Or if it's my meeting, then you know just reschedule it for me. How nice is that? Today, Mandy and I are going to break it down how it works, and we'll share our version of the system design from Google Calendar integration to AI-powered intent detection, and also you can steal the code. See you there. Hi, Mandy. Hi, Angelina. So today we're gonna showcase a new little Telegram application that we built. The motivation was, you know, when I was sick and bedridden, I wanted to check my like calendar to see about meetings and res- reschedule the meetings. That's when I realized, like, oh, what if I have this AI assistant that I can just talk to directly and then make that happen? That would be really helpful without me. Having to log into my computer and do everything myself, so we actually made this happen. Yes, I will talk about it, but first, let me share my screen. So I have the GitHub repo ready here. This is the address of the GitHub repo, and I called you know, Kalibot. So the idea here is you start having a conversation with the chatbot, and then. It's gonna ask you, do you want to set some meeting or something like that, and then you can just start、mm-hmm. giving the information that it needs, so you know that when you want to set some meeting with your calendar, and in this case, it's integrated with Google Calendar. So first of all, when you start the conversation, I didn't showcase that in here, but if you are not、um, authorized, right? If you haven't been authenticated to your own calendar, first、mm-hmm. it will send you a URL that you need to click on, and then you go there and you just give authorization to this app, and it's gonna create some access token for you, and it's going to be valid as long as you are using the chatbot. But if you're not using it for, let's say, thirty minutes, then the next time that you start having a conversation, it will give you another URL, so you have to relog in or give authorization、uh, to the bot. So here I didn't show that, but you can see that I said, you know, what are the events for tomorrow? And it says there is no events. And then after that, so if I go back in here, so what are the events for tomorrow? And it says no matching events found. And then I say, okay, can you make an appointment with Mike, an arbitrary name, for tomorrow from ten to eleven a.m.? There is an agent which. Is responsible for getting a structured information, which includes the the name of the person, the date, the time, the description of the event, things like that. It tries to capture that information. In this case, I gave all the information that is necessary. But if I had said, "Can you make an appointment with Mike for tomorrow?" then it would come back to me and it says, "Okay, what time do you want to have the meeting?" I didn't showcase that in this demo. But you can definitely do that and give it a try. So all the information that is needed is essentially here. It's gonna extract the name of the person, the time, or the date, and then the time, which is 10 to 11 a.m. And then it doesn't need anything else. It goes and it creates the the event and it sends me the URL. You can see it's、uh, it's been added to my calendar here. And Then I say, okay, can you update the time from 10 a.m. to let's say 2 to 3 p.m. And you can see it's kind of there is some kind of typo here, right? Two and you know to are kind of together, but it still understand, of course, like this is an LLM that is parsing that. And then it says, I understand you want to update, right? Appointment with Mike on this date. It asks me for my confirmation, and then I say yes. Now on the right hand side, you can see it. This meeting has to jump to this area, right? And 
right? So we can see two to three, and it also gives the details of the meeting, the summary of the meeting, and then also the URL of the meeting. And then if I ask, okay, what events do I have for tomorrow? Initially, you remember it says no matching event found. Now it says, oh, there is an event scheduled for tomorrow, and um, that's with, with Mike. Uh, it gives me all the information. What if you want to schedule a meeting with me, right? I'm a real person. So is the bot going to uh, search for who's Angelina? Do you have to provide the email of myself or, you know, move an existing meeting in the calendar, which is with a real person? Uh -huh. That's a good question. So right now it is not um, connected to the email. In order to get the email addresses, it needs to have access to some kind of email list, right? So it can extract, if I say with, with Angelina, Angelina, then it has to go and search through that and find, let's say, uh, Angelina. And even if there are multiple ones, it has to kind of come back and says, you know, there are multiple ones. Which one do you mean? Right? In this version, it doesn't have that, meaning that I don't give it a list of emails where it can kind of go and search. So this is one feature that <laughs> needs to be added. Another thing that uh, it is that is not implemented yet is if I ask to create multiple events at the same time, it doesn't really check to make sure that there is already an event essentially, right? Uh, so it doesn't need to add the same event twice, so it will do that. I mean, it finds that there is an event, but it doesn't necessarily just uh, stop from adding another event at the same time. This is the second thing. And the third one is if you want to add another event which has some overlap with some existing event. Let's say you have from two to three and then you want to add another one from 2.30, let's say to four, then there is an overlap. Again, it doesn't do that checking and kind of confirming with you necessarily. So this logic is not there. So this is another feature that needs to be added into, into the bot. So right now, no contact list, and no you know, overlap meetings, checking is done. Another thing is if you want to do a bulk uh, you know, kind of action, meaning that you want to update several different meetings at the same time. And then again, it doesn't do it for all of them. It just goes with the, one of them or the first one that it finds. Um, it's gonna show you all the events, but it doesn't update or delete all of them together. That's another feature that needs to be added. But I think for the first version, it's pretty complete. If you want to run this on your own system, you need to do some configuration with the Google Cloud. You need to create a project and to create auth, right, OAuth. And uh, so it can kind of access your uh, Google Calendar. Here you can see the diagram roughly. This is the general system design. The user will ask a question or start talking with the bot. And then when it does that, it comes through a Telegram API to the backend. And the connection between the Telegram bot uh, and our backend is a webhook. And then after that, when it comes to our backend, which is a fast API application, I'll show you the code in a moment. And then it will just go and pass the user message into uh, an agent, an NLP agent, and its job is to extract all the information necessary to, to do some action right uh, on the event. If it's a event creation or if it's you know, update or deletion, whatever the, the action is, it tries to extract all the information that is necessary. So it's going to pass that to some kind of LLM with a specific prompt that I'll show you in a second. And then it's going to get some structure output. This is, a, uh, this is an agent, but very basic agent, meaning that there is an LLM and then it's going to just extract information from the user message. So the tool here is extracting information, right? It's not like L L Got LLMs it. that do some, I don't know, like online search or things like that. But in a nutshell, it is still the very basic version of an agent, right? And then when it identifies the intent, it's going to check to see if 
the information is complete or not, if that's the case. And the, so this, this is a separate agent. I called it NLP agent or intent detection agent. And then after that, it's going to pass the result to the main agent, which interact with the user. And then it will check based on this information that is extracted, if there is any information missing or not. If that's the case, it's going to send some message back to the user saying that, you know, for example, you didn't specify the time or date. So the user will uh, enter that information and the same thing will happen. It comes through this uh, process again. However, because it's already captured some of the information and there yes. are some missing pieces, then every time I will pass the entire conversation history to be able to extract all the information necessary. If everything is fine, there is no need to interact with the user, then it will go ahead and just do the action, whatever the action is. If the action needs some kind of confirmation, meaning that let's say you want to delete an event or something, then it will just, again, send some response back to the user to get the confirmation. So you can see here, there's a confirmation that user can confirm. And if that's the case, then it will come back here and then the action will happen. This box here, the green box is for the OAuth. Initially, when user starts talking, even if it says hi or you know create an event, in the workflow, it will check to see if it has access to the user calendar. If it's not, then it will send a URL to the user in the Telegram app and the user has to click on the URL, go yes. through and give access uh, to the app and then after that it says okay you're logged in you can you know close the window and then user can kind of continue the conversation um i also put a database here uh, right now there is no concept of database meaning that i am not storing any information but this is the general system design that if you want to have a very good you know ai agent or calendar assistant you need that, definitely. Um, any questions? Human in a loop is very, very much needed, I feel, for this process because it's a big decision, right? You want to reschedule, cancel, or things like that. Yes. So that's, again, part of the prompt that will show you for update or delete. It will get, you know, user confirmation, but for create, typically it doesn't do that. And this is the sequence diagram, which essentially goes through the process from beginning to the end uh, when user starts interacting. So I already covered that, but you can take a look at this entire sequence diagram and um, kind of follow the, the flow of the conversation from uh, beginning to the end, which is when some action happens in the calendar. Any questions? You should be able to uh, scrape my email from the event itself, right? Not from the contact yes. list from that event it's able to do that yes yes if the event mm -hmm. is having the because that's called participants so as part of the google a calendar api there's a participants which is the name of the person right. and the email address and in reality when you create some kind of event oftentimes you want to also send that event to someone so you include email addresses here, when it generates or add or creates the event with someone, um, because I didn't uh, give any you know, email addresses, it doesn't pick that. But when I am adding the event, when I say add some event with Angelina and here is her email address for tomorrow, then it also captured the email address and will include that. Yes. A, what about integrating with uh, Calendly? True, yes. Yeah, Calendly is a really good, tool to integrate with. I think, I don't know if they have some API. I think so, though it makes sense that they kind of, you know, provide API. So for third party apps, but yes, that could be the next step. I mean, this application is not hundred percent ready, but this could be a business by itself, right? It could be used for different businesses from doctors to all sorts of maybe a small businesses if they want to provide this feature to their customers so people can do it online mm -hmm. or by a telegram bot for instance instead of calling the doctor's office and say oh i want to 
set up some meeting, right? Make an appointment with the doctor and all that. Uh, yeah. I would love to have a personal assistant who can handle my calendar. Think about it. Like all the CEOs that we've worked with, they have chief of staff who's or secretary or somebody who's like taking care of their calendars, right? So this is like low hanging fruits. It should totally be able to, you know, be automated, especially if we do like voice as well, right? I don't want to exactly. even type. I didn't want to talk to the the bot and then say, can you tell me what, like what events I have tomorrow? Can you reschedule it? And, I, you know, just search my contact list and find that person. Things like that. It would be awesome. That's a good point. Um, right. This is not supporting voice. I didn't implement that. But mm -hmm. um, with the other bot that we recorded, Nova, but the voice and all that is there. So people can really use the codes from that project and simply add that in here, and add this voice capabilities, have a conversation instead of typing. I believe that these messaging platforms like Telegram, WhatsApp, Slack are going to become really big because a lot of businesses could actually be done on these platforms. You don't need a separate web application to, you know, to do that. A lot of people are already having right? Um, these messaging apps on their mobile so they can easily use and integrate these things. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Into, into the... Wait, this is a really cool project as well. Maybe, maybe we should start reaching out to our doctor's office and see if they can, they can use something like this. <laughs> so, That's a good, good point. point. We got to do it. Yeah, maybe I'll call my dentist tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Sounds great. Uh, and this is, uh, this is it for today. And we will see you next time.